If I have copyright claims and or copyright strikes on some of my videos, will I still be able to apply for the YouTube Partner Program and monetize my channel when I reach the requirements? Yes, but. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. This is by far one of the most popular questions we get here at vidIQ. And I think the reason for that is because YouTube themselves don't provide you with a definitive answer or if and when you apply for the YouTube Partner Program and you're rejected, YouTube don't give you a thorough enough explanation, which leaves you thinking, was it because I had one or two copyright claims on videos? So with that being said, I've got a couple of questions for you. Do you have any copyright claims or strikes on your channel? How many do you have? Have you applied for the YouTube Partner Program with copyright claims and strikes and were you rejected or accepted? Share all of your experiences in the comments below and help fellow creators. And now it's our turn to investigate. Here's what we found out. When a creator uses content without the permission of the owner of that content, the creator runs the risk of violating copyright laws. We'll save the argument of fair use and such for another video. Let's just say you are guilty. YouTube handles this two different ways. Those are copyright claims and copyright strikes, and you can treat this as a good cop, bad cop scenario. When you receive a copyright claim, YouTube is basically saying that you, the creator, can use the copyright owner's content, but the owner of the copyrighted content has the right to place adverts on your video and earn income from it. In this case, you, the creator, are not punished for doing this. Now, of course, there is a side argument here of whether or not that is fair. If your video contains less than 1% of somebody else's content, why does that copyright owner get to claim 100% of the ad revenue income? Like fair use, that's an argument for another day. And let's be honest, a copyright claim is a lot better than receiving a copyright strike. This is where the copyright owner isn't playing ball at all. Your video will be removed from your channel and you will also receive a copyright strike three of them and your channel will be terminated. And it might not end there either. In extreme cases, you could find yourself in legal hot water and have to defend yourself in court. A couple more things to clarify. You don't need to be monetized yourself in order to receive copyright claims and copyright strikes. Even if you have zero subscribers, zero views, and it's your very first video, if it's copyright content, you could get a claim or a strike. Also, there is no guidebook or directory that's going to tell you whether or not you would get a copyright claim or a copyright strike. Although there is a technical exception when it comes to music. The YouTube music policy directory lists the copyright status of thousands of tracks explaining what happens if you use them in your videos. For many tracks, you will be allowed to use them, but you won't be able to monetize the content and it may be blocked in some countries. Using these songs will also result in a copyright claim that you'll be able to review on your channel. However, for many more thousands of songs, you will find that there is a blanket ban. If you try to use it, YouTube may mute it, block it, most likely copyright claim it for the owner, and yes, even stamp a copyright strike on your channel. Now, to be clear, this only applies to music and YouTube are going to be pulling away this tool anyway, so it will be difficult to access it to know what's gonna happen if you use any of this copyrighted music. If you wanna know a little bit more specifically about music copyright, we actually tested this on one of our videos and you can find out the results over here. And also, there's no similar directory for video content. So in short, before we get to monetize your YouTube channel, the YouTube copyright system isn't something that you can hack and it's not a game to be played with. If your mindset is, I know the risks, I'm going to do it anyway because I just want to monetize some of my content, then you're probably going to run into problems, which we'll talk about a little later. On the other hand, there's many creators out there who probably use copyright content unintentionally by mistake on just a couple of videos and now they're worried about whether or not their entire channel is going to be affected and they won't be able to apply for monetization. So let's look at what YouTube does tell us about applying for the YouTube Partner Program. Make sure to check under the like button for links to all of the stuff I'm about to show you. The first one being the review process. If you just needed 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time, all of this would be simple. But to monetize your channel, you also need to comply with YouTube's community guidelines, terms of service, copyright guidelines, and Google's ad policies. Now that's a lot of complicated stuff that systems can't do themselves. And this is where an organic element comes into play. Each channel that applies for the YouTube Partner Program must be assessed by a human reviewer. 
Not to give humankind a bad rap here, but we're not perfect, we're rarely consistent, and we can't do absolutely everything all at once. Now, of course, a human is going to follow a set of guidelines and protocols from YouTube, and they look something like this. It's not a complete list of everything the review will check for on your channel, but when it comes to the question of copyright affecting your application, these are probably the two biggest red flags. For example, let's say you've made 10 videos on your channel and just one of those videos has a copyright claim, but that single video accounts for 60% of your watch time because it went viral thanks to the copyright content within that video. In that case, have you really reached 4,000 hours of watch time within the spirit of the YouTube monetization program? On the other hand, let's say a creator has hundreds of videos on their channel and four or five of them have copyright claims, but those videos account for 20 to 30 hours of the channel's total watch time. The human reviewer at YouTube is probably gonna recognize that as nothing to be too concerned about. And just to be clear, this is hypothetical. I'm not saying this as as fact. I'm just putting myself in YouTube's shoes. Now, some may argue, what's wrong with using copyrighted content on my channel? I'm not monetized, but it allows YouTube to put adverts on my videos so that YouTube earns money from it. While in the short term, that may be true and it will earn YouTube a few extra bucks. In the long term, it degrades the credibility of the platform. What YouTube really wants from all of us is original content. YouTube often talk about something called reuse content. This is content you may be allowed to use and is free from copyright, but it is something that YouTube frown upon and may prevent you from monetizing your content. In YouTube's own words, the spirit of this reused policy is that it's to make sure we, YouTube, are incentivizing unique and original content in the YouTube Partner Program and that we're protecting and rewarding the creators who work hard on original content. Now, to be completely transparent, copyright falls under its own policy, while reuse content falls under the quality control policy, all under the YouTube Partner Program monetization application process. But if we remove the legal and ownership aspects out of the copyright policy, then the definitions are essentially the same. Copyright, reused, it's unoriginal, YouTube doesn't like this. And I think when it comes to reviewing your channel, YouTube is going to take into account the volume of copyright and reuse content on your channel. So if you have a copyright claim or a copyright strike on your channel, will you be rejected for monetization? No, but bear in mind copyright strikes are serious offenses. Or if your channel has no copyright claims and no copyright strikes, you'll automatically be accepted into the YouTube Partner Programme. No, because you've also got to consider reuse content and all of the other community guidelines you need to adhere to. As always, when it comes to YouTube, it's never a black or white answer. There's a misty, murky shade of gray you've got to try and wade through. In fairness to YouTube, I contacted them both through online support and through Twitter for clarification. Online support sent me to the links you will find in the video description and Team YouTube on Twitter did respond, but with a typically generic answer. The best response actually came from KTP Wrestling, who told us that it took 18 months to be accepted for monetization. They didn't have any copyright claims nor strikes, but they were aware that there may have been some copyright material on their channel. Anyway, let's fast forward to the worst case scenario. You know you've got copyright claims on your channel, you apply for monetization and you're rejected. What happens next? Well, there is a silver lining. You can reapply, but it gets awkward. If you use someone else's content enough to annoy YouTube, they will reject your application via email with the headline reason of either duplication or reuse content. The problem from the creator's point of view, which can be really frustrating, is that YouTube won't tell you specifically what's wrong with your channel. They won't list a certain video that needs to be removed or tell you that you need to get rid of these copyright claim videos. You have to work it out. And then 30 days after you were rejected, you can reapply. Now, I will admit this has been a pretty long video to answer what seems to be a very simple question, but turns out to be quite complicated. And I'm going to make a bit of an assumption here, and I apologize if I'm wrong, but if you've been wanting to know the answer to this question, 
and you abandon this video after two or three minutes because you were bored, then I'm afraid you're not taking YouTube and copyright seriously enough. And yes, I do appreciate the irony of talking to an audience that's already left the video, but for those who are still watching this video, you are serious about YouTube and you are serious about following the YouTube copyright guidelines and everything else that's gonna ensure that you get monetized. So well done to you. I've said this before in previous videos, monetization of your channel is not an entitlement. It's a privilege that is rewarded to those who deserve it. We've got more copyright content over here that you may find interesting. Don't forget those links below to reference all of the stuff we talked about. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your copyright free video making day.